One of the main reasons the heavy metal chromium is so toxic is that its hexavalent chromium form, chromium-6, acts as an oxidizing agent. It can attack and oxidize things, which is bad in your body, but we can take advantage of that oxidizing property in order to oxidize the chemical that forms then a different chemical that then will look purple. And so in this DPC assay, that's what we do. We take this chemical DPC on 5 diphenyl carbohydride. Note this group here. Now what it do it was re if we mix it with chromium-6, the chromium-6 is going to oxidize that. So now you can see we have a double bond here and we're left over with chromium-3. Now that chromium-3 is going to react with this leftover DPC, this oxidized DPC, which is DPCA, so diphenyl carbazone. And that goes, this complex of the chromium-3 with the diphenyl carbazone looks purple. And you can measure how purple it is, which corresponds to how much chromium-6 there was, by measuring the absorbance at 540 nanometers. And you can compare that to a standard curve that you make with chromium-6 of known concentrations mixed with the DPC, and in this way you're able to determine the concentration of chromium-6 present. And you can do cool things, like see if bacteria were able to reduce that chromium-6 to chromium-3. This acid is pretty simple. What you have to do is you take the DPC and you want to dissolve it in acetone. And you want to do this in a, like, either a tube with foil around it or a darkened tube, so because it's light sensitive. What you do then is now you need to acidify it to make it the active reagent. So you take your DPC solution and now you're going to mix it with sulfuric acid. That provides the acidic environment that's good for promoting this oxidative reaction. So then you take that kind of like active mixture, your active DPC reagent, not just your DPC kind of solution, and then you mix that with the sample that you want to test for the presence of chromium. Now, if you have a high amount of chromium, you're going to have to dilute it. So we actually pre-dilute our bacterial media samples in order to have it so that it's in the linear range of the assay. We can determine that linear range using our standard curve, where we take the the chromium-6 and we serial dilute it, then we can make a trend line, get the equation of the trend line, and then calculate the concentration of chromium. We know from past experiments how much we, like what the linear range is, and so we're able to, to pre-adjust doing like a 1 to 3 dilution of what we start with. Just a technical note that when I'm doing this, I typically use a plate reader assay, and the plates for the plate reader only hold a certain amount for my serial dilutions and for my sample dilutions, I want a larger volume. And so I'll go ahead and prepare it in a deep well plate. And then I will transfer from the deep well plate into my sample plate using a multi-channel to make my life a lot simpler. And so you can just use the multi-channel to add water to the different wells, add your chromium stock to the first well, serial dilute across, Dilute your samples under that, so everything's all in this deep well plate, and then you can just transfer directly from the deep well plate into your plate reader plate, and then do the absorbance. You want to always make sure that you're doing a serial dilution, a standard curve, at the same time you're doing your assay. Make sure that the timing is the same and everything like this. Because the DPC assay, like the color can change over time and things, and so you want to make sure you're doing your standard curve at the same time that you're doing your samples. Then you get that information, you apply that trend line, and you can see, did the bacteria remove the chromium? Fingers crossed. We took bacteria, and we grew these bacteria in the presence of potassium dichromate. So we took the chromium-6, and we spiked the bacteria's food with it. And normally, if you have normal bacteria, they'll kind of just die. But if you have bacteria that are able to reduce that chromium-6, what's going to happen is that the bacteria are going to remove that chromium-6 from the media by reducing it, converting it chemically to chromium-3. And remember, chromium-6 was going to react with our diphenyl carbohydride and make a diphenyl carbohydrazone, leaving you with chromium-3 in the process that can then form a complex with that diphenyl carbohydrazone in order to make that purple color. And that then though, if you remove that chromium-6, now there's not chromium-6 that can then oxidize the DPC, so you can't form that colored complex. So if the bacteria do what we want them to do and remove that chromium-6, we should see that that purple color disappears. Because DPC will only react with chromium-6, not chromium-3, 
What happens is that if bacteria are able to reduce that chromium-6 to chromium-3, that less toxic form that basically your body actually needs a little of, well then it's going to turn clear. Note though that it's not able to detect the presence of chromium-3, so you don't know if there's clear because their chromium, it's, the chromium-6 is now chromium-3 or because the chromium is just like gone altogether, which could happen like if the bacteria actually took it in or something. But we know from our AES, so atomic emission spectroscopy, which can measure total chromium, that the bacteria that we care about are actually chemically reducing the chromium to chromium-3. It's important that we have controls, so that the media, so the food that the bacteria are growing in, we want to make sure that we can kind of measure the amounts of chromium that was in there to begin with, and then see how that changed in the presence of the bacteria. If you do this with a standard curve, you can actually go ahead and calculate the amount of chromium that's remaining after the bacteria kind of did, did their stuff or didn't do their stuff. So we'll have to go and see.